Look. What did you think of Roger Rabbit? We just moved something out of the way. Well, I'm supposed to write a review uh, picture, and I want to. I want to write a very short thing. It, it's like the story of the emperor and the two con men who said they're going to make him this wonderful suit of clothes at great expense, and they make him nothing. So, but he doesn't know that. He 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 thinks since they say, "Look how wonderful these clothes are," they must be wonderful. So he said, "Yeah, wonderful." So he went in a parade stark naked, thinking he was wearing this beautiful apparel. And this little boy broke the whole spell by saying, look, the emperor has no clothes on. That's the end of that story. Now, my story is that they made the clothes, but they forgot the emperor. <laughs> no storyline at all. <laughs> it's a terrible story. It is... The, the the kind of a story that any good story man, like Mike Maltese or one of, one of these good story men, uh, could have whipped up, I would say in two days, uh, and they hung $45 million on that. You disappointed in the artist coming up today? When I say artists, I talk about the animators, the directors, the storylines, a little of everything. Well, no, I'm not disappointed. You see, I I see animation as a great whore. Uh, she walks around demurely for a little while, but then she puts on the her shoes and goes into the street. Now, in my 64 years of watching this happen, I just know that this medium is being misused by American business as often as possible. And that's pretty often. Uh, you don't get a, uh, a Walt Disney very often. Instead, you get people who uh, work in networks and have no creative ideas whatsoever, but think they do. Or, or, you, or you get people who work and uh, advertising agencies, and they're just as stupid. And so they try to take over the actual, the core of filmmaking, which is the creative part, and run it, and order the people around. I saw Hannah, no, I guess it was Joe Barbera from Hannah Barbera, on TV one time, and he was saying something about the fact that they had to start off with a very simple outline and submit that to some horse's rear end in uh, the uh, in the networks uh, before they could start on a project. Well, Hannah and Barbera know more about the animation business than the whole of Mattis Avenue put together, you know. And the very idea that they should have to do this makes me jump up and down with rage, you know. Did Max have to do that? No, no. You see, all these, all these old boys like the Warner Brothers and so forth, they just considered that the animation end of making movies is something too mysterious to worry about, so they Never by the MGM, uh, Warner's, even Columbia. But they didn't bother the people. They let them do the work. You know. So no matter, other people call them monsters, but compared to the idiots on Madison Avenue and the dummies in the networks, these are the real monsters. They have come in and castrated the whole industry. You know. What's the most uh, well-run studio? We haven't talked about Disney yet. You left Fleischer for Disney because you were impressed by the yeah. films you were seeing coming out of the Disney studio. Well, I had a, I had a detour. Uh, I went to iWorks Studio for a beginning. Uh, I was there. This is when iWorks left Disney. Yes, yes. He, uh, 
He sold out his quarter of the business to Walt Disney for $25,000. Uh, now, at this point in time, yeah. people were pretty much thinking that Iwerks was the genius behind the Disney films. They knew it. They were sure of it. So One person was Pat Powers, too, right? Pat Powers thought he had really uh, taken all the steam out of Walt Disney because he took his best animator and set him up. Now, Iwerks himself was a, a fairly dull man. He drew very well, but he drew like an engineer, really. I remember I went there and I had to do a stagecoach, and I was used to the rough and ready approach at Fleischer's. So I drew these wheels not, not too well. Well, he happened to come by and see this and he got very angry. And he sat down and he drew these perfect ovals. I couldn't draw a perfect oval. <laughs> it's impossible. So we ended up doing all the wheels on my drawings. And uh, I, I, one day I was doing a picture about a, uh, an automobile with the hood up and the engine exposed. So I had uh, eight cylinders. And the, well, he happened to come by and he said, oh, you know, I have an idea. And he drew about 20 cylinders and he laughed his head off. Now, no one in the audience is going to laugh at that. That's an engineer's joke, baby. But it certainly is not for anime cartoons. His story sense was terrible. He had Grim Natwick, Bernie Wolf, Al Eukster, and I, the four people who drew the best Betty Boops in Max's studio. Now, he could have easily done a, a, a woman character and we would have gobbled it up. Instead, he was very worried. Max sent him a letter and said, any resemblance to Betty Boop that these fellows make, I'll sue you. Even before you drew anything. Yes. Well, we never did draw anything because he uh, he changed. Uh, Grimm would draw a girl character and he would, uh, for example, take all the shape out of the legs and arms and make pipe stems. God help them, they should have a calf and a forearm. So, uh, so we never did anything with that. Walt Disney would have grabbed that in a minute. Uh, and Flip the Frog was double ugly. There was no way to make him cute or appealing. He just was a very ugly character. Ub could not see anything about an audience. He didn't understand an audience at all. It was Walt who understood the audience. So he would, he would guide Iwerks into drawing something that was useful. But when Iwerks was by himself, he was a disaster. Willy Whopper also? Terrible. Who cares about that? The pressure Willy must have been in incredible on him by the producers financing him to outdo Disney. Yes, and also uh, Pat Powers. Pat Powers was a despicable old Mick. You know? <laughs> he was a bandit. He was he and Charles Mintz were the two barracuda in the business. He used to offer iWorks new sound equipment. Well, he loved machinery. He couldn't resist the temptation, so he'd get deeper into debt. And the deeper he went into debt, the more the profits went to Pat Powers. If they didn't go anyhow under the table. So poor up he had the finest equipment. And uh, in fact, when he heard that Walt had invented a 3D camera, he went off and he bought a lot of parts for a Chevy, went down in the cellar, and for $350, he made a very good 3D camera, <laughs> which we used on these terrible movies. The style he was going for was taking fairy tales and redoing the stories. Yeah. But it just didn't catch the public's imagination at all. That had been done already, you know. And uh, anyhow, they, uh, 
he took all the all the fun out of them. You know. uh, as a matter of fact, we did uh, one picture called the Brave Little Soldier, which is about a little thin soldier. You know. He falls in love with a little doll, and at the end of the fairy story, they uh, are in a fire and they and they go to heaven. So we did that. We had a sad ending on the picture. In fact, uh, the music composer had uh, taps as the theme <laughs> as they went up to heaven, you know. Well, Pat Powers uh, got in touch with uh, the manager at the studio, and he hated the idea. So we sent him a telegram. <laughs> After all, we were backed up by having an ironclad contract. So we sent him a t telegram which said, in effect, uh, since he didn't know anything about animation, uh, we didn't care for his opinion. <laughs> and uh, to imagine, he must have blown a gasket. <laughs> were you there when he had a close-up shop? No, I left, and uh, I subs subsequently got into, ma uh, into uh, to Walt Disney's by uh, the skin of my teeth. I went to see Walt, and he gave me an interview you know, right away. I'd never met him, but he knew my work. He and knew who you had worked with last. Huh? He knew you just came from uh, the iWorks studio. Oh, he, knew, he, he not only that, but he knew what I had done there, too. Uh, in fact, he mentioned one scene that I had animated, uh, Jack the Giant Killer. He said that was a very good thing. So I felt quite hardened. I thought, well, gee, what should I ask for? Three, well, maybe 250 a week, maybe. But then he dashed that by saying, well, frankly, you know, I have uh, taken on a number of these New York animators, and they have terrible habits. They are really terrible. So I've decided to go to high schools and colleges and get young people who have no bad habits like you, you know, and uh, use them and teach them from the start, not have to get rid of them. It's too much trouble. You know? All of a sudden, I realized he was telling me goodbye. <laughs> and I said, listen, Walt, I, I really want to work here. And he said, no, uh, that's not possible. Uh, uh, in fact, Monday, I'm hiring a whole batch of young kids from uh, high schools and and uh, I'll teach them and, uh, he said they're getting uh, only fifty dollars a week I was getting two hundred fifty dollars I said I'll take the fifty and he said no I said really I want to get in here and I don't care how I get in I know I'll be good when I get in I need to learn and he said, my God, I guess you do. So he hired me to come in with these novices Monday morning. That's how I got started. How long were you at Disney for? It was four years. It took me a year and a half to get rid of the bad habits. There was that uh, much good structure at Disney? Oh, they had the, the, the art school. It was incredible. They had the best art teacher. I ever ran into. I think he maybe was the best art teacher, the best American art teacher that ever was. His name is Graham, Don Graham. And uh, so we, we found, uh, so every Wednesday, we didn't work, we went to the art school. Uh, all of the New York <laughs> contingent and all of the new, new kids uh, went to the art school and worked all morning at things like uh, perspective, sort of dry as dust stuff. And then in the afternoon, we had a model. We drew from the model, and we got an education that I don't think you could get in any college, not Yale or anywhere in the whole world. This man was so well informed. And his teaching was marvelous. You see, there's a big difference, as I learned when I was a model, between a, uh, a teacher and an instructor. 
The instructor tells you a woman is seven heads high. You do that. Uh, the teacher says, look at the form and see how the, they are divided in masses and how the masses move against each other. Some difference. So I had four years of working with Don Graham and later I went to Chenard's where he was working again. And I had three more years, so I had seven years exposed to the best art teacher, I think, in the, in the country. So that, that's, I don't care what people say about Walt Disney. I walked away with an education that I have used the rest of my life. Oddly enough, including the fact that I, uh, six years ago, I decided to be a writer. Uh, so I never had written anything more than a script for an anime cartoon or some letter from my travels to some friends. Now I had to write a book. I was writing this autobiography. And I found that uh, sometimes I, I didn't like a, a piece of it. And I was using a typewriter, so I would start over again. And my wife couldn't really believe what I was doing. I would throw away uh, pages six and eight times, you know, with no compunction, out. It's not over again. And the reason I could do that is because Walt instilled this idea, which I w wish they would have in public schools too, that if you, could, if you think you can do better than you, you did, that's a victory. You don't throw out the stuff in defeat you throw it out victoriously into the basket. The waste paper basket is your friend, not your enemy. You know? This changed my entire life because when I worked at Max's, of course, I never changed anything in the whole two years I was there. Not a drawing. And I knew that sometimes the drawing was poor, but n nobody said change it. So I let it go. But not here. I learned to bust my head every, so it, it still goes even in writing. I do the same thing. Let me just uh, change tape. Yes. Can we go a little longer? Sure. Oh, great.